In this lesson, we are looking at photosynthesis. It's still Unit 1, Topic 1. Here is our syllabus subject matter and our Pearson chapters that match. Okay, cells need to do a lot of work. They need to do chemical reactions, they need to remove waste, they need to bring in nutrients, just their general function, whatever it is they're meant to do. To do work, you need energy, all right? Makes sense. Energy is found in organic compounds, so those carbon-based compounds broken down and converted to a form that cells can actually use. Now, that form that we want to talk about is ATP. All of this stuff kind of happens in the mitochondria, right? That's our powerhouse, that's where this ATP is formed. Uh, adenosine triphosphate here uh, has a high energy bond, all right? And when it's broken down, it releases that energy, turns into ADP, which is adenosine diphosphate. This is a delightful picture from the 70s uh, to show you that, yes, we call it uh, ATP, the energy currency that our body uses. That's the only form of energy it really likes. So anything we take into our body and digest, like sugars, we say, well, that's the energy. Actually, our body turns it into this ATP. In order to uh, get all this ATP, we have to get some organic compounds into our body first, and then our body converts that uh, chemical energy into kinetic energy or anything else like heat energy that we need. Now, the energy transforms a lot, uh, and plants use light energy to help cr uh, create the chemical energy, obviously, um, to help their own cells create ATP. So there's a kind of extra step in the process. They are the autotrophs. However, we are heterotrophs as animals. We need to digest the chemical energy directly we can't make it ourselves. So you would have heard producers versus consumers, heterotrophs versus autotrophs. Now, photosynthesis can be described as the production of carbon compounds in cells using light energy. Carbon compounds are the ones we've discussed already, so like uh, mainly carbohydrates, but also lipids and proteins. Uh, now, organisms with the ability to make carbon requirements using that light energy and simple organic molecules are called autotrophs. Auto meaning they can do it themselves and they make that energy. Now, the energy is obviously converted from the light energy into the chemical energy, as we've discussed. Here's our beautiful balanced equation, our balanced chemical formula for photosynthesis. We've got our carbon dioxide and our water in the presence of light, and in this case, chlorophyll, which is our photosynthetic pigment, though there are others, um, create our byproducts, which are in this case, glucose, oxygen, and water. Little historical sidebar, prior to photosynthetic organisms uh, actually being around, the atmosphere was completely deprived of oxygen, it just didn't exist, right? Oxygen would previously have to be captured and stored in other ways in organisms. So photosynthesis is the most significant natural source of oxygen gas. And ancient prokaryotes that were photosynthesis, the photosynthetic, sorry, could absorb that light energy and turn it into sugars. The absorption of those photosynthetic uh, prokaryotes into bigger prokaryotes became what is our current modern eukaryote. All right, photosynthesis is an active process. It requires energy in the form of ATP as well, right? It's not a passive process. It needs energy to oddly create energy. So it's a very chicken and egg situation. We need the ATP to do the photosynthesis to get more ATP. Now, the reaction uh, requires energy to form bonds, so it takes energy in, it is endothermic. Whenever you have two smaller molecules and you're making quite a large molecule out of it, you need to use energy to form those bonds, um, and we're talking very small molecules into a very, very large one. And so the energy deficit filled by, you know, we fill that energy deficit by taking in the light energy, not us, plants, other photosynthetic organisms. Very first step of photosynthesis is photolysis. Okay, photolysis is a process producing the oxygen within the photosynthesis process. Okay, lysis means degradation. It's actually degrading water molecules to release oxygen and uh, electrons and some hydrogen atoms here. And that very first step sits up here. Okay, that is photolysis. And this is a beautiful diagram to show you that there are actually two processes within photosynthesis. There's a light dependent and a light independent. Obviously, for us to do the photolysis, uh, we need the light energy to break down the water and that oxygen can be released straight away. Very easy to make oxygen if that um, chlorophyll is present and there's water present, okay? That's what's happening in the light dependent, but also we start to make the chemical energy. So the light's absorbed by the chlorophyll and results in the production of this ATP just down here. And then that ATP and the hydrogen we formed in photolysis goes down into the light independent reaction. So that could be happening at night when there's you know, no actual light requirement there. Now the ATP ATP 
uh, and the hydrogen come down into this and it becomes into this carbon fixation process which actually produces say our glucose molecule or our sugars right again that energy is required to do it so the this process so ATP is required to to keep this process going you're going to see this uh, depicted in so many different ways this is less than ideal but you will also see the uh, light independent reaction spoken about uh, and called the Calvin cycle which it is it's quite complex we don't need to know any more about it all right, factors which affect the rate of a photosynthesis. Now, the factor that is furthest away from ideal, that will be the limiting factor. Temperature is a really big one. Uh, it's an enzyme control process. Most things in, in organisms are. Enzymes are pretty much everywhere. So if uh, temperature changes, then the uh, rate of photosynthesis is going to change in the same way that we see our enzymes um, changing light intensity obviously if we increase the light we increase how much the light dependent reaction can happen but it's going to top out eventually because that light independent reaction is going to need to happen the concentration of carbon dioxide so one of the substrates that's being used there if we increase the carbon dioxide concentration we increase the light independent reaction but eventually you know like any enzyme situation it's going to top out it's going to plateau because it can only do so much um, one more limiting factor is the type of light energy that the organism can absorb. So visible light is accessible to plants and photosynthetic organisms and visible light has, you know, this tiny little range here, 400 to 700 nanometers, red with the lowest energy and blue uh, to violet with the highest energy. So white lights are a mix of all these colors and things that appear certain colors look like that because they are reflecting that. You should have probably learned that in year nine science. So chlorophyll is one type of photosynthetic pigment found in chloroplasts and it appears green because it reflects green light. Now it best absorbs blue and red light. So say if you set up experiment and you uh, pump a lot of blue and red light at a particularly you know, chlorophyll filled photosynthetic organism, then you're going to get some effective uh, photosynthesis. The absorption 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 spectrum is uh, you know which light waves absorbed by that pigment so as I said there's more than just chlorophyll these are different types of um, so carotenoids are the, the orangey yellowy ones they best absorb those blues but they don't necessarily um, absorb the reds like say the chlorophylls okay All right, that's our photosynthesis uh, unit <laughs>